Welcome to my nuclear family. <laughs> hey everyone, Charlie Murphy here. Today we're going to be looking at The World Is Not Enough, one of my favorite childhood movies growing up. But as a nuclear engineer, it has some very funny moments. So we'll be looking at those, seeing what it gets wrong, and what it gets right. We will take a look at it and see what we find. And make sure you wear the ID. All right, so on these crates back here, we got a little radioactive logos. Whenever you see that logo like that, that means there's a quantity in that package that can carry enough to cause harm to a human, given enough exposure time. So he's sitting right in front of it. So probably being like a separate hold. We are dealing with people who want to uh, take over the world, so they can tend to follow those kinds of things. I'm gonna go get some air. <laughs> those things look ridiculous. So someone down there is in a decontamination shower. When it comes to radiation, there's two modes that it can harm you. The first is irradiation. So that's like standing in the sun. Energy is hitting you. The second is contamination. So what the showers are for is for contamination. If you get radioactive stuff on you, you want to wash that off so it can't keep emitting radiation so close to your person. Uh, would they have showers here for this? Yeah, I would presume so. They had live cores in the air. They weren't in a glove box. They weren't in a sealed environment that the operators were manipulating behind some kind of close, some kind of enclosure. So yeah, they probably would have showers for this. I pulled the plutonium out of the one inside. You okay, so it was plutonium. Okay. Detonate the triggers. So for a nuclear bomb, you need something to start the explosion. With plutonium type bombs, you have a sphere, a hollow sphere surrounded by explosive that needs to blow up in such a way at such a precision and with such uniformity that it all squeezes the core in at once increasing the density of the core and giving you a chain reaction so in its normal state before it blows up it's safe it won't cause a chain reaction but when it, all the explosives around it blow up and squeeze it in with such force that's when it becomes a critical mass and you get a nuclear bomb so the triggers, that's what she's referring to, is the stuff that will start the explosion to squeeze the plutonium and make the nuclear bomb. So these are conventional explosives. The place is clean. No sign the of the bomb. The bomb is in the pipeline. Oh my god. That seems a pretty credible threat, you know? Use a nuclear bomb to blow up a pipeline. Not only will you blow up a big chunk, that's not really the main thing. You'll highly contaminate the area where the pipeline was, so trying to rebuild it would be an issue. Now... Stealing a nuke and then trying to hotwire it, that would require inside knowledge. Some They'd have to have some kind of scientist or engineer who designed the thing to be able to hotwire that, I imagine. I don't think it's going to be easy to do that. Put me something? Oh yeah, you know it. I don't touch it. Well, he can touch it. Safe. It's not safe. Touch it. So if you get plutonium inside you, it's very dangerous. She got it on her hand, she's gonna like touch her face now and it's gonna go right into her body and just like head right to her bones and just sit there and just irradiate her for the rest of her life. Spoiler alert, is not much longer. He can touch it, cause Renard's crazy, he's gonna die anyway, but don't touch it, lady. Don't do it. That's it. Put weapons grade plutonium in that sub's reactor. Instant catastrophic meltdown. Use meltdown for like a catch all for all nuclear accidents. I mean, if you could get fuel into that reactor underway or additional um, plutonium into it, it would, uh, it would blow up. Um, it would, you would get an, a huge surge in power and uh, a steam explosion, but we'll get, we'll get to that. The explosion would destroy Istanbul, contaminating the Bosphorus for decades. It would not destroy Istanbul, but it would contaminate it for decades. And here's the reactor compartment. Um, I'm presuming someone shut this down. You would not want to be in the reactor compartment while it's running. You would be getting insane radiation. If it's shut down, you can go in. The reactor is designed when shut down to not really emit a huge dose of radiation. It's got a huge, thick steel wall. That's mostly to contain the pressure of the water in the reactor. Yeah, I would not want to be where they're standing right now. It will take me half an hour to set up the machine to make the plutonium rod. And apparently they have a plutonium forge on the submarine. <laughs> it's time to make a new fuel rod underway on a submarine. 
Look, they even made a nice little container to hold it in. It's got all the proper warnings and it says plutonium. These are responsible terrorists. Stay! Stay! Go! Ah! <laughs> Since when does down mean up? Down never means up. Yep, insanely high doses of radiation at the moment is what he is getting. Just bathed in deadly radiation, no big deal. Yo, Jesus. Raising the lid off the reactor. You know, reactors just don't open like this. They're under intensely high pressure, very high water pressure. Just the fact that he already withdrew those controllers completely means those reactors have already blown up. As long as the reactor coolant doesn't burst. You are not safe from radiation. There is fissions going on, billions of fissions per second. Welcome to my nuclear family. <laughs> oh look, it's boiling. It's a BWR reactor now. If it were in a completely critical, safe, steady state operation and you introduced that much material instantly, uh, the reactor would like instantly explode. The power level would get so high that it would turn all the water to steam and you'd have a massive steam explosion. Not a nuclear explosion, a steam explosion. Which would, uh, of course, spread all the fuel out over an intense area. But they, uh, they got some like blue water flowing around through like a pump back there. And then I think the reactor's behind that? Oh yeah, here we go. So it's shown the temperature rising. It would be happening much faster than this. And so what's this reactor waiting for to blow up? It's just like slowly raising its temperature until it goes pit. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Okay, so the reactor is now safe, right? The temperature's coming down. The hydrogen gas level's too high. One spark and the reactor will blow. There would only be hydrogen gas though if there was a void in the reactor. Um when water is superheated, super hot water in contact with zirconium cladding on fuel rods generates hydrogen gas, so which could have happened. So they prevent, they were trying to prevent the reactor from blowing up and the reactor blew up. No, Bond, you did not win. You failed. You failed, Bond. The reactor still blew up. The Bosphorus is contaminated for decades. And there you go, guys. There was my reaction to The World Is Not Enough. I love this movie. It's a childhood favorite of mine. Uh, I will never not enjoy this movie, but it does get silly in the nuclear stuff, but it's fine. It's a movie. It's a Bond movie. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what other movies you'd like to see me to do. If you liked what you saw, consider checking out my other content. I'm working on my video series right now, Intro to Nuclear, to get you up to speed on radioactive concepts. And uh, until next time, I'll see you guys then, and uh, have a good day.